Another state that could cast the deciding votes in tomorrow's elections, North Carolina. Winning there could be essential for both campaigns, and with less than 24 hours to go, the race remains extremely tight. North Carolina Governor Pat McCrory is with us now. Good to have you, Governor. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. A beautiful North Carolina day here. It certainly looks it. So let me ask you, sir, a New York Times Siena College poll out today shows a tie in the presidential race in your state. The average of recent polls has Donald Trump ahead by just a point. Why is it so close in your state? I think uh, one reason it's close is because there's so much uh, Hillary Clinton fatigue. I think there's Clinton fatigue. And another big issue in the state of North Carolina is Obamacare. Our premiums are going up 30 to 40 percent, and that's impacting a large amount of people. So when that announcement came out two or three weeks ago, it maybe wasn't big national news, but it was very big state news for individuals who are just trying to hang on to their uh, medical insurance. Well, also, sir, it seems so. There are more than two and a half million people that have already voted in your state. 42 percent are Democratic affiliated, and 32 percent are Republican. Are you sensing or do the numbers tell you that there's a little bit more enthusiasm right now on the Democratic side? Or could we see, as Donald Trump is suggesting, a late surge for voters that haven't been polled in the past? Actually, just the opposite. Uh, what we do is benchmark against 08 and 12 when Obama was on the ticket. And right now, the Democratic turnout is much less in early voting than it was in 212. And Republican and independent turnout is up substantially. So. You can't look at early voting and compare it to nothing. You have to compare it to uh, 12 when Obama was on the ticket. And, and I think what we're seeing is there's not enthusiasm with President Obama not on the ticket, and Hillary is not bringing the people out to vote in early voting. So I think right now the advantage is to the Republicans and independents, not just at the presidential level, but also in my race and other races down ticket. Governor, can you guarantee right now a Trump win for North Carolina? Oh, I, I would never guarantee an election. Uh, I, I do. I, I, the numbers seem to be working toward Trump's advantage in a Pat McCrory re-election and a Richard Burr re-election, but everything is dead even. This is a purple state, so everything is going to be dependent upon turnout and who's voting. Will the young people turn out? Will the older people turn out? Uh, everything is going to be about turnout and whose turnout is coming out to vote. But we're seeing a huge number of unaffiliated voters, and the question is, who are those unaffiliated voters supporting? Uh, at the top of the ticket and other parts of the ticket. So it's going to be very interesting. But again, the early voting numbers are an advantage to the Republicans at this point in time. Governor, looking back now, hindsight they say is 2020. What could you and Republicans in the state have done differently to make the numbers more favorable for Donald Trump and also for your election as well? I don't know if we could have done anything differently. The Democrats have probably outspent both the president and me by three to one. My Democratic opponent for governor has raised a lot of George Soros money coming out from California, New York, and we've never seen money come in like this from North Carolina. That's actually been coming in. I've had commercials being run against me for two years now from outside organizations that we've never heard of. And in fact, I saw a commercial against me last night, and I decided to vote against me. <laughs> Governor, I want to pivot to your own race. You're one point behind your Democratic contender, Roy Cooper, in this new poll from the New York Times and Siena College. You've actually made up for your support for the so-called bathroom bill, the HB2. It was a focus of your re-election bid, but a Reuters Ipsos poll finds 38 percent of likely voters in your state are actually less likely to support you because of the law and the fallout from it. Is your support for that measure hurting you now? Actually, I think it's hurting me in some areas, helping another. But I need to clarify something. It wasn't the Republicans who brought a bathroom law to North Carolina. It was the Democrats and the left wing. Republicans had never heard of a bathroom law. It was in Charlotte, North Carolina, that wrote a bathroom law. Sir, but where do you believe uh, it's hurting you, and where do you believe it's helping you? Uh, it's probably hurting me in the college areas, university areas, and it's probably helping me in the more conservative suburbs, and especially those who have kids in our schools that don't want to uh, have their uh, uh, daughter share a bathroom or locker room or shower with a, uh, a male. Uh, that's probably where it's helping me. But uh, again, this was really a left wing. The, they wrote a left wing law which talked about fining $500 if corporations don't recognize uh, gender identity and gender expression and, and a 30-day uh, jail sentence. It was the Democrats that wrote the bathroom law, not the Republicans. We just overturned it. The only area where we have a bathroom law is what we've always done in our, in our universities, in our schools, 
and in our highway rest stops, we're going to use the same procedures we've always used for the past 50 to 100 years. Nothing's changed here with regards to that. It's one of the most understood and best propaganda machines I've ever seen by the uh, a group called the HRC that's convinced the national media that the Republicans brought this issue up. Governor Pat McCrory of North Carolina, thank you, sir, for joining us. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.